anybody ever played this game? Sharon Hornelson here. This is, of course, the game Operation. And I just got a new version of it from the cabin to play with my grandmother. And lo and behold, open the Operation game. If you know this game, it's a game with bones in it, different parts of the body, and you have to be careful to pull the bone out and not set off a boy, a, a boys, a buzzer or noise that that means that you lose your turn or you don't get the points and you have to, the bone goes back and you play again. Well, lo and behold, one of my favorite things about this game was that it had little bone shaped bones in it. And as I'm investigating it, the funny bone has been replaced by a smiley face, which makes of course a laughing sound. All the sounds instead of just being buzzers are actual sounds now, which is cool for kids. I guess kids need more entertainment and more stimulation than when we were little. But I remember growing up with this game and it was one of my favorite little games to play with my sisters. And now I wanna play it with my granddaughter, but the reason I'm showing you this today is because funny bone, tickle your funny bone, is our idiom. It means of course to make someone laugh or to, to make yourself laugh or to make you laugh, something that makes you laugh. Now, nobody's sure actually when this started to become popular as a saying, but it of course re applies to our, we all have a funny bone, right behind our elbow, there's a bone called our humerus. And if you hit that with something or bang into something, sometimes it hurts like crazy, but other times it sends this electrical shock through our bodies that it's it hurts so bad, you just have to laugh. And that's the, that's what tickle your funny bone kind of means. It means how do you create a fun, humorous, happy reaction in yourself or in other people? Well, isn't that why our businesses exist? To make the world a better place, to have a positive impact on the world? If, if yours doesn't, then maybe you shouldn't be listening to me. But if it does, and <clears throat> if you're wanting to grow and build your business, how can you use laughter and humor and delighting your customers? I don't know, a while ago, People went from customer service to customer satisfaction to customer delight. Now, what does delight mean? It means to make people happy. Now, you don't have to necessarily make them laugh, but you do have to serve them in a way that makes them feel a certain way, feel good. I know some of my favorite brands are brands that I can relate to. Brands and businesses and services and products and companies that I like to do business with are those that I feel have common values, common goals to me. So if there's one, say, outward goods manufacturer that supports the environment and helps to make the world a better place, I am much more likely, <coughs> aka Patagonia, to use their products and services or Arteryx than I am other companies that are just in it for the money, right? So it makes me feel good to know that I'm supporting something and a company that's actually supporting and making the world a better place. So there's all kinds of brands all across the board that we, we know about or don't know about and support. But we always do business with people that we like, right? We do business with people we know, like, and trust. Well, if you're laughing and you find value and delight and happiness and joy and they make you smile and they make you feel good every time you come in, those are the companies we continue to do business with over and over and over again. I think we all, well, we used to all have a favorite restaurant where we would go or a favorite um, place where we would go socialize and hang out because we like the people, we like the owners, we like the atmosphere, we like the way the place makes us feel. So how can you in your business create a feeling of association and, and make your customers feel the way you want them to feel about doing business with you? It's more than just policies and procedures and customer service and, and teaching everybody to smile and when they walk in the door ask them if you can help them especially if it's not sincere. Nobody likes that. Everybody hates that. We all hate that. We all hate being treated as if we're just a number or as if we don't matter. So how do you do it? You pay attention to people. And it doesn't just apply to our customers. It's how do you treat the people that are a part of your organization, your team members, your coworkers, your employees, whatever you call them. How do you treat your vendors and suppliers and people in the entire chain in your industry? How do you treat your competition? Guess what? That matters, right? It matters how you treat your, co your competition, how you feel about your competition. Because guess what? If you're being yourself and you're doing the best you can for the people that you serve, you never have to worry about the competition. They become irrelevant. So tickle your funny bone. I would love to know your experience with this particular uh, idiom. I know that sometimes in, emer in emergencies especially, I have found that Breathing and finding the humor in the situation and just getting through it and managing it the best way possible is always the best course of action um, 
I remember back one of my first jobs, one of uh, the gentlemen I worked with on one of my, he wasn't even on my team, on one of the teams, cut the tip of his finger off. He had a terrible safety record, was always doing things that he wasn't supposed to, and he, he lost the tip of his finger. And everybody else in the place was freaking out. And I'm like, okay, stop. Follow the trail of blood, find the finger. And then I took him to the hospital, and everybody else found the finger, put it on ice, brought it to the hospital, sewed his finger back on. But, but even with him, as I was with him, sitting with him, trying to make sure that he stayed calm, we, we discussed and we found humor in the situation and we figured out how to focus on what was gonna work out and how we could make things possible versus you know being all serious and stoic and thinking it was the end of the world and it ended up you know everything turned out fine but had I freaked out with everybody else what would have happened we might not have found his finger we might not have gotten it back and sewn on on time so uh, <clears throat> always always do your best but know that paying attention to people, really seeing them, really caring about them, and treating people the way you want to be treated. Man, I've been saying that a lot this year. Treat people the way you want to be treated, uh, and watch your business flourish and grow. All right, that's it. Have an absolutely amazing day. I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where did it come from? Hopefully we know when it came from, because I think the ones that have been around the longest have definitely worked their way into our culture and the way we treat one another. If there's an idiom you want to know meaning of, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to play some Operation. I suspect my granddaughter's going to kick my, my booty on that, too. All right, have a great day. Bye.